Today we have a 2021 Honda Accord and we're going to be taking a look at a pretty popular and entry level bike rack. It's the Swagman XC2. A lot of you online are wondering if it's a good rack. Are Swagman bike racks good? I think so. We deal with a lot of racks here and there's no lack of quality. We have the adjustments that I want. It can fit two different size hitches, an inch and a quarter and a two inch. I think this is a great, great rack. The Swagman XC2 is gonna be a upgrade for any of the hanging style racks. It goes hanging style racks, then platform style racks, and when it comes to the best bang for your buck, the Swagman XC2 is the best deal you can get. A lot of you are wondering how to lock your Swagman bike rack. Well, the XC2 is gonna come with a standard anti-rattle hitch pin and clip but you can grab a anti-rattle bolt with a lock on the end of it on our site. You can also grab a bike cable to lock your bikes to the rack as well. What bikes are gonna be best for the Swagman XC2? Well, if you have a higher end bike with a carbon fiber frame, it's not gonna be ideal because we do have frame contact with our frame hooks up top, so you don't wanna use that. Also with your fat tire bikes, the cradles are only going to accept widths up to two and a half inches. So you're not gonna to want to put a fat tire bike on here. Also with the electric bikes, the capacity of this is gonna be 35 pounds. So the electric bikes aren't gonna be ideal for this either. But as long as the wheelbase of your bikes is anywhere under 52 inches, it's going to fit. And there's a lot of different style frames that we can fit as well. Sometimes we're gonna need to use an adapter bar like this for our step-through bikes or for the kids' bikes, but sometimes we don't really need to. What allows us to maybe shift this around a little bit and make us not have to use this adapter bar is these cradles down here. They will be able to slide so you can kind of maneuver it to fit your bike perfectly. You just need your hands to loosen up this knob here and we can adjust this all the way to the end. The goal here is to get the higher part of the frame on our step-through bike as close to that frame hook as possible. So we're gonna shift this one way and we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Now with our wheel loops adjusted, let's put this back down and notice how we have the higher part of our frame closer to our center mast. That was the goal here. We might have to make a little bit of adjustments. I usually leave one a little looser so I can adjust it. The goal here is just to get the outsides of these loops touching our tires. So then we can grab our hook. And this is most likely gonna eliminate the need to use our adapter bar. But there's another thing you can do. Notice how I don't really have enough room right there, what I can do is I can swap these around. They don't have to go exactly where I have them now. All you have to focus on is make sure that the longer hook is going to be going on first. So I'm going to swap these around and I think we can get this to fit without the bar. And now with our frame hooks swapped around, we eliminated the whole need to use that adapter bar. The whole point of this is just to let you know that it's going to fit with a wide array of bikes. And with that adjustment as well, we can really offset our bikes so we don't have any contact with our seat and our handlebars on either of the bikes. So that's good. Now we're going to take it out on our test course. We have some GoPro set up just to see how much movement there is with our bikes and the rack in our hitch. Like any other bike rack, whenever we put it in reverse, if you do have a backup camera, it is going to obstruct your vision a little bit. It's not just with the Swagman XC2, it's with every other bike rack. Out here on the test course, we're gonna have some speed bumps. It's gonna be like the speed bumps you see on the road, also those dips and those potholes you may be hitting. Up next is the oscillating speed bumps. It's just going to be uneven terrain you might see on the road. And now we're going through and doing some evasive maneuvering just to see how the rack stays still as we turn right and left pretty sharply.
Let's see how it's going to be to use the Swagman XC2 in our day-to-day -day activities. All we need to do is just undo our little frame hooks here. What I like to do with this is just hang them down low. And this first bike is pretty easy to get undone. So we can just grab this directly off the back of the rack and put our bike aside. There's a lot of different ways we can use the Swagman bike rack to take the bikes off. So one, we can just go ahead and take this frame hook off and lift it directly up and over. But this is just gonna depend on how tall your vehicle is, how heavy your bike is, how strong you are, and how tall you are. We can also just go like this and take it off to the side. But also, if you just wanna take it directly off the back of it, we have a pin down here. We can pull, we can fold this down and then take it directly off. So there's a lot of different options there. Another cool thing about being able to lower the center mast on the XC2 is we can still access our trunk. We're a little bit far out from it than normal, but it's still gonna be enough to be able to put stuff in and take stuff out. Folding down the center mast is really gonna come in handy for your SUVs, but for your sedans like this, trunk access is granted. There's one bike rack I would compare the XC2 to, which would be the Swagman XTC2 Tilt. The difference between this one and the XTC2 Tilt is it's going to tilt away to get better access to your hatch or your trunk. And it's also gonna give you the option to grab a separate cradle, which is gonna be a little bit wider for those fat tire bikes. A lot of you are wondering if we can drive with it without bikes on it, because we wanna make sure we can see our license plate and our taillights. So we can drive with it like this. We're not gonna have a whole lot of obstruction of our view whenever we're backing up. Our license plate is visible and so are our taillights. But there's another thing that we can do. There's a pin right here. That's gonna be inserted in this configuration. There's another storage position that we can drive with. We're gonna pull this pin put our center mass straight up, pull these two pins on each side, and it's gonna fold in like a suitcase. This is going to give us view of our taillights. Your backup camera and our license plate is gonna be a little covered up, but we're still gonna be able to see around it a decent amount. This is a very, very compact way to fold up this rack. Not a lot of them do this, so this is gonna be great for storing it in your garage or in your vehicle. You'll take a three quarter inch socket to loosen up this anti-rattle bolt. I do suggest leaving a tool like that in your vehicle so you don't have to borrow one from the garage. It's always nice to have that tool ready to go just in case you need to put this somewhere. Once that's pulled out, we can take this and set it up on the wall in your garage. When I store my bike racks, I always like to keep the pin or your anti-rattle bolt in there just so I don't lose it. And this isn't really gonna wanna sit up on its own. If you put it in a corner, it'll kinda sit up on its own, but it's very, very small, so it could take up a little bit of space on a shelf or something in your garage. Let's measure it just to see if you have a spot in your garage for it. When it's folded up, it's about 33 inches tall from the end of our shank to the very end when it's folded up. It's about 26 inches. And then it's gonna sit up off the ground in this orientation about, I'd say nine and a half inches at its tallest point right here. It's also very versatile with the hitch sizes. So right now we have it set up for an inch and a quarter but it is gonna come with a little sleeve here. And what we do is you just put this in like this. There's a little threaded portion on the other side. And then all you need to do is just take a six millimeter Allen key to screw this in. So you have multiple different hitch sizes on multiple different vehicles. You can convert it over so you can use it on all of them. So if your friend has a two inch hitch and you don't wanna drive to the trails that day, you can just convert it and put it in there as well. If you do have a motorhome too, it is approved. It takes about 30 seconds or so to convert it for the correct hitch size. Some of these bike racks get pretty heavy. Some of them go all the way up to 100 pounds. This one is only 25 pounds, so it's gonna be pretty easy to bring it upstairs and maneuver it around. 
Those measurements are gonna help you figure out if it's gonna fit into your garage. If you live in an apartment, those will help you see if it's gonna fit into your closet. But another thing is, if you have enough storage space, like our cord here, it fits very, very well. And there's so much more room in there. So it's gonna be pretty easy to live with. Here are some universal measurements. All you need to do is go to the center of the hitch pin hole on your vehicle, on your hitch, and measure from that to this point right here is gonna be 10 inches. And then the farthest part, which is the other wheel loop, is gonna be 23 inches, which actually isn't a whole lot. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues fitting into your garage, but take those measurements and that'll let you know if it will or not. Notice our shank. Our shank does have a three inch rise to it. So this is also gonna help if you have a very steep driveway or anything else where ground clearance is something you kind of need. That's pretty much it for the Swagman XC2, but let's go ahead and load this up like we're going to the trail. Let's say we're putting new bikes on here. So we have to readjust everything. Let's loosen this up a little bit. Slide it over, tighten it up. Sometimes our pedals will get in the way, so we want to kind of rotate them so they're out of the way. Put up that center mass if you haven't already. Insert our pin here, and the longest hook will go first. Now on to the next one. Handlebars on the opposite ends of each other to prevent any contact, go like this, and put our hook on. And that's pretty much it. If you're looking just to get your bikes to and from the trail, the XC2 from Swagman is gonna be a really cost-effective way to do so.